Welcome back to the last day of the workshop. And now we will have Ning Chuan Zhang from uh, University of Pennsylvania, who will give us the last lecture on the chromatic series. He will tell us about monochromatic layers, chromatic convergence theorem. Okay, take your okay. time. Yeah, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the introduction. Thanks for the introduction. So since this is the last day of the of, of the online summer school, I would like to take this opportunity to to thank all the organizers to put together uh, this wonderful summer school. So so today this is going to be the last of the chromatic uh, of the lectures on chromatic homotopy theory. So the uh, so the title of my talk is uh, monochromatic layers and the chromatic convergence. This is part of a larger picture about. A uh, larger of a, about the finer structures of the category, infinity category of spectra, uh, which is also reflected in the geometry of the moduli stack of formal groups. So today, as you can see, we have uh, at my talk will have uh, will have will have uh, five parts. So we'll first uh, talk about the. So we have been so in earlier in earlier talks, uh, Guchuan and Chipong talks, we have learned this beautiful connection between formal group loss and uh, uh, and 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 formal groups and complex cobordism, and uh, and from there using Atom's Novikov spectral sequence, we can connect the category spectra to the modular stack of uh, of uh, of formal groups. And from there, we'll study the finer structures of this modular stack, and with uh, and analogously in the side on the homotopy series side, we'll study the localization with respect to a certain periodic homotopy series. That's the title of uh, Doc Rabinow's paper. That's one of the main references today. And after that, we'll introduce the actual mono monochromatic layers and a related concept called telescope localization, which involves us one of the biggest open problems in the field of chromatic, in in chromatic homotopy series, namely the telescope conjecture. If you have time, we'll, I'll explain how to use this machinery about the localization fraction square to do some actual computation at height one. So today's talk, the main reference is uh, Doc Ravenel's paper and the orange book and uh, Lewis notes. And also I included two other references. One is a short paper by uh, Gross and Hopkins. Uh, the title is pretty long, but it started with rigid analytic stuff. I'm not going to talk much about that paper, but there's a table connecting the more geometry of MFG with spectra is really enlightening. And uh, if you want to know more about the geometry of modular stack of formal groups, then there's uh, pretty much a book by Paul Gores uh, on quasi equivalent theories over the modular stack of formal groups. I have posted the links to some of the references in the chat. I don't know if you can, if you join just now, I don't know if you can say them. Okay, so before we start the modular stack of formal groups, so let's recall where we left yesterday. So recall. At the end of yesterday, where you recall at the end of yesterday's lecture, end of last lecture, we stated the fracture square. We have this theorem for any spectrum X, uh, where as there's a, a fracture square, arithmetic fracture uh, square, namely we can X, we can decompose it into a. Uh, we can we can decompose it. We can first rationalize X, as well as peak comp, uh, do the peak completion of X at all primes, and take the rationalization of peak completions. So this means we can recover a spectrum X in theory from its rationalization. And uh, uh, it's p completion at all primes. So let's think about it. The rationalization part is easy. LQX, this is very easy to understand because rational spectra are just products of analog McLean spectra. So by that, I mean, this is actually equivalent to uh, a product of suspension n of, uh, let's say, H high n of x uh, tensor with q, so just rationalization of, uh, so you take the n homotopy group of x, you rationalize it, take the anamorphic spectrum and suspend to the 
right degree. And that's X. So rationally, there's not too much to say about the rational spectra. So especially if there's no like, more complicated structure like the K invariance in positive of tower, it's just product. But however, the P local P completion, this has even more finer structure, has even finer structure that we'll talk about in today's lecture. And maybe you will remember one thing. This rationally, this trivial, this the simple structure is sort of related to the one fact that I think probably Bu Chuan mentioned before. So recall that a formal group law, a formal group law over Q is uh, isomorphic actually uh, if you do strict isomorphism, the strict isomorphism will also be unique. Iso canonically, strictly isomorphic to the additive one. So over rational numbers, the formal group law side, there's not too much to say as well. So there is some deep relation between spectra and category of spectra to the category of quasi-coherent shifts over the moduli stack of formal groups. This is a moduli stack of formal groups. And here I said formal groups and formal group laws because we, there's some sort of difference. And also probably more precisely, it's not just quasi coherent shifts. I really want to derive categories. So the chain complexes and really merge weak equivalences. So how does this work? That's the first part of my talk. Geometry of MFG and how, why we care about it. So the starting point is, I mean, chromatic homotopy theory at its very origin is an attempt to understand the Adams Novikov spectral sequence to compute homotopy groups of spaces. So uh, recall the for any X, let's just say space spectrum, whatever, there it is an Adams Novikov spectral sequence to compute its homotopy groups whose E2 page is of this form, E2ST. This is equal to some X group in the category of MU star MU co-modules and by graded ST, MU star comma MU star, the MU topology of X and this converges to pi T minus S of X. One way, so this is Adam's Novikov spectrum is, is an important tool to compute the homotopy groups of spheres. And one, and let's say what does Quillen's theorem say? So Quillen's theorem, one version, a more elaborate version, says if you consider the pair mu star, comma mu star mu as a Hopf algebra, this is a Hopf algebra. This is equivalent, actually, I should say isomorphic, to the Lazar ring, which is a ring that classifies a formal group loss, comma W. This classifies a strict isomorphisms between formal group loss. So Quillen's theorem tells us MU star and MU and the formal groups are very closely related to each other. And actually moreover, MU star MU co module And if you, on the right-hand side, if you take the stack quotient of spec L by spec W, this is gonna give us the moduli stack of formal groups, which will uh, denote it by MFG. Under this correspondence, under this correspondence, uh, we also have the cat equivalence of categories between MU star MU co-modules and the category of quasi-coherent shifts over the modulized stack of formal groups. 
So in this way, we can rewrite this the YouTube. Oh, whoops, whoops. Why did I erase all those things? I want to highlight them. We can re replace this YouTube page of the Adams Novikov spectral sequence by a shift cohomology over the moduli stack of formal groups. This is S and with coefficients. So there will be some shift. So this, so under this correspondence, M U star of X, this S cohomology will correspond to some quasi coherent shift over the moduli stack of formal groups. And we probably want to do some twisting by omega and uh, by, by some powers of omega and probably I have to do T over two. Well, probably, for when t is even. Yeah, so, so in this sense, we can kind of say there's a correspondence if for any given any spectra, if you take its mu star homology, then we'll actually land in, uh, actually we'll not land in the quasi current shift itself, so more precisely, we'll land in the derived category of the cat of quasi covariant shifts of modular stack formal groups. So this means the geometry, so one slogan is the geometry of MFG reflects the structure, uh, let me just write it down below, the structure, some finer structure of the category of spectra. And this is illustrated in a very beautiful table in that paper by uh, uh, Gross and Hopkins, which I'll paste here. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. Okay, uh, for, I guess it doesn't really work now. Ah. Okay, I thought it's gonna work. Never mind. Okay, I guess it's not gonna work, so I'm, I'll, I'll not try that. Okay, so so basically there's gonna be a correspond. Basically, there's this slogan. So let's think about this the structure of MFG. So we want to, if we, if we want to study any skin over Z, this is a stack over Z. So you can study its rational points. Like it's not at rational, like based into Q. This only has one point, as one point, as one point, because uh, the uh, formal group loss over a Q algebra uh, are, uh, isomorphic to uh, just the additive one. But however, the modular stack of formal group law, groups, if you compare the P, this is gonna be more complicated. This has more very fine structure. So this is has finer structure. So recall in Gutran's talk, he mentioned that uh, this following fact that over the separable closure of a finite field, uh, formal group laws are classified by their heights. Namely, for each height, there is a formal group law and two formal group laws over a separably closed field are isomorphic if and only if they have the same heights. So this means if we base if we just uh, base change to FP to the separable closure. Uh, I don't know where to put SAP, but let me just write a bar over here. Then this means this as this will be just if you take its geometric points, this will has one point, whatever point means for each height. So actually the picture is as follows. If you take MFG tensor over FP, then it will have a filtration by open substacks. So it will have a filtration by open substacks as follows. The bottom one is U naught, 
u1, u2, this. And this is the, the, the modular stack that classifies formal groups of height at most zero. This is height at most one, height at most two, so on and so forth. This forms an exhaustive uh, filtration open filter by open substacks on the formal groups. And if you take any difference between those two, they take the complements of U minus one into UN. This is gonna be the so-called H and this would be by addition. This is a modularized stack. This classifies formal groups of height exact. And guess what? This is sort of, this has a finer structure. It's a stacking quotient of F P to the N by the Morat stabilizer group. And if you take the formal neighborhood, if you take the formal neighborhood of HN inside uh, UN, we will get something called HN hat, which is of the form spec of pi naught of the Morara E theory, which is this pi naught is also the looping tail deformation space by the Morara stabilizer group. So we have this picture and later this picture. So sorry for allowing me to indulge myself in this picture of algebraic geometry, which at this point might look, be, might look like it's unrelated to uh, to, to Gaussian localization, to chromatic, but later we'll realize those pictures, we'll, we'll find their analogs in the category of spectrum. So sort of, we want to say that this MFG localized at P, so you should believe me, this should correspond to the category of peak complete spectra. Peak complete spectra. And so you may wonder how, what, what, what about those finer structures, those UNs? Those, what about those finer structures? How, how can we, how should we, how, how should we think about that? How, say, what does this UN, what, what's the corresponding? So you may wonder what about this UN, what does it correspond to you? In, sorry, I should do it the other way. So if you think about those open substacks, oops, open substacks, this UN, what does it correspond to you? And also this HN, uh, what does it correspond to in the category of spectra? So we'll talk about that now. And this finer structure is realized by chromatic localization. Namely, we will realize those finer structures. Uh, sorry, what does chromatic localization mean? So go, we want to study, say localization with respect to the bus view localization with respect to certain periodic homology series by that uh, Morava E series and K theory and, and Morava K theory. So uh, here's a definition. At the end of the day, we will say those localizations, they correspond to those finer structures on the peak completion of the modular stack of formal groups. Definition, which I probably should have introduced yesterday, two spectra, X1 and X2, are called Bowes field equivalent. Uh, I should uh, X, if one of the following condition holds, if one of the following equivalent condition holds. Uh, first, uh, the two localization functors are equivalent. 
I guess that's intuitive to call it possible. If the two localization functors are equivalent, it's intuitive to call the functor possible equivalent. Second, uh, E, a spectrum E is X1 local. If and only if E is X1, X2 local. So by IE, we are saying the two categories, the two full set categories, uh, X1 and X2, they are, I should say probably, I want to say they are the same, but I don't know if that's too strong. And 30, E is X1 acyclic, if and only if E is X2 acyclic. I mean, we define the, we, we define the uh, localization by saying like there's no map. First, if, how, how do we define this local and, uh, this local and cyclic business? We first define a cyclic, right? And we define e a spectrum to be e local if it cannot be detected by uh, cyclics. And then we use those notions to define the possible localization. So it's not too hard to say those two, those three conditions are equivalent. And uh, the theorem, the important theorem, is is the following: that the Bose field localized uh, in this case, I should say, in this case, we will write x one angle bracket is equal to x two angle bracket. So angle bracket means equivalence classes, a Bose field equivalence classes of spectrum. So zero, uh, the bus field class of EN is equivalent to the bus field class of EN minus one, where uh, the bus field class of KN. And if you think about wedge product, actually this wedge product is preserved under bus field equivalence, it's compatible. If you use the third definition, a cyclic, this definition, because at the end of the day, it's just homology. It's just, we're just computing the homology with respect to this, this homology theory. And if it's homology, yeah, you can, you can, you can check that. And inductively, uh, using induction, this implies EN as a bus field class is equivalent to K0, which also is HQ or MQ. Which K1, sorry. All the way to Kn. So how are we gonna say this? How are we gonna uh, say this? Well, oops. How are we gonna say this? Uh, well, we'll use the lemma. If E is a ring spectrum, and V is an element in pi K of E, then the Bosphere class of E is equal to the Bosphere class of V inverse, the mapping telescope of V, which was, uh, I shouldn't use V, I should call it my V and which are too, too similar, with the cofiber of V. And here, let me remind you this. Uh, so we'll define this map. So in this case, what do I mean by the telescope? That so in this case, we'll consider this V. Yes, it is a map from SK to E. So we'll also consider the map from E to uh, suspension, sorry. We'll also consider the map, oops. Uh, from suspension k of e, this is v smash one to e smash e, and e is a ring spectrum, so it has multiplication. And this is what we, and then we call this map, just we also call this map v by a of notation. And uh, here by v inverse and quotient by we really mean this v, really mean the same way here. So now 
let's do one example. I'm not gonna prove the similar, and actually I'm just still gonna do one example. E1. So recall approval of uh, the idea of the serum, I should say. Example. Uh, recall pi star of the first Mora E theory. This is the P, the P addix, a uh, join a form power theory variable U1, and together with something about element where the first part, this part has degree zero. Uh, this is degree zero. And this part, uh, depending on your convention, people either set it to be two or minus two. I'll just set it to be two. So what are we going to do? Which element we want to invert? Well, there's a very convenient element. P is in pi zero of E1, right? So E1 is also an, actually it's an E infinity ring spectrum. So we can play this game. So if we set V to be P, multiplication by P, then the Bosphere class of E1 is equal to the Bosphere class of P inverse E plus of which, which sum with E quotient out by P. So now you notice if you, P, E is already P complete. And if you invert P, that means this guy is rational. This is rational. So as a, as a result, the, the first term is actually both sphere equivalent to K0, AKA the rational sphere or whatever you want to call it, MQ, maybe. And if you question about the second term, E or P, let's just look at the homotopy group. Just quoting up by P, even though that's not necessarily the case. We just take a more P on the homotopy group. This is FP join U1 and U plus minus. And it turns out this is Bauss field equivalent to K1. Where K1, you remember the K1, the homology, it's a coefficient is FP join some plus minus, but those two are equivalent. Turns out they are equivalent, they have the same bus field class. So at least for E1, we prove this sort of decomposition, but of course for EN, it's gonna be more complicated and actually certain to prove this fact, to prove this sort of splitting of a bus field class, uh, we have to use the language of stack. If you read the, TN, the chapter in TMF book, when they, when, when they prove the splitting, they use the language of stack to really prove to make sense of this argument. Okay, so what does this splitting bias? Anama is the following. So this is a generalization of the fracture squid. If E, F, and X are all spectra, such that the uh, such that the F localization of X is eocyclic, then we have a fracture square, namely the E localization with respect to E, uh, uh, e and E wedge F, this will have two maps to L E of X and L F of X. And then there's a map to L F, L E X. There's a pullback square. So maybe our first question is why on earth, why on earth do we have say those two versions, those, oops, I did I do this again. Uh, why, why, why did we have those two localizations? Well, what's the natural transformation here? So I need to explain to you. So what, what, what are those two maps? Actually they are, so recall. So if we, if we think about it, a spectrum, Y is E wedge F a cyclic. This means E wedge F star of Y is zero, but we know this wedge sum is behaves well with homology groups. So you actually get the direct sum decomposition. So that means, so from this we know that Y is both E a cyclic, and a cyclic and F a cyclic. 
right? But conversely, if y is e local, then it is automatically, then it is automatically uh, e wedge f local. So this means this, so this implies that LE which fx is not necessary, is not uh, e local or f local. So we can further localize them. And if we, we further localize them, this is actually equivalent to just LE local. So that's what those two maps means. And combined with this splitting of the Bosphorus class of, of EN and this fracture square, and of course, we have to verify this assumption, which I'm not going to do. At the end of the day, we get a further splitting. We get a, so now, so now take in this story, take E, uh, take E to be Kn and take F to be E n minus one. Then can check uh, E n minus one uh, local spectrum. Uh, or, uh, uh, or K n local. And from this, we get a fracture square for any X. We have a pullback square. And uh, also probably I should introduce one notation. I forget to do that. So one notation, uh, has, uh, if we now denote uh, L E N by L N, then we have a fracture square like this. So X, you take this L N localization, then it will have two maps, one to the KN localization, one to the LN minus one localization. And this gives you, and here is the other way, sorry. It's so LN minus one localization of LKN X. This is a pullback square. So if you think about what does EN mean as from the start of Mora E theory is a deformation of a height, a pine out of Mora E theory at height n classifies deformations of a height n, the height n Hound of a group law. So it should contain the information of height at most n. And the L n minus one should contain the information of height n minus one of X. So if you think about the picture from, uh, from, from uh, the geometry of a modular stack of formal groups, then you may ask, what if we take the homotopy limit? What if we take the homotopy limit of all those LN localizations? So you take the homotopy limit of LN X to LN minus one X all the way to L zero X. And you might ask, what is, what is this? And that turns out to be, well, this is a chromatic convergence theorem. This is a chromatic. Convergence. What does it converge to? It converges to the P localization of a spectrum X. It converges to the P localization of the spectrum of X. So here's a playbook of how we can. So now, we first we have the fracture square. We can we have the fracture square of spectra, and for each p information, we can try to we can. Now, we can try to recover the p localization of x from 
all of its L and localizations. We can try to do that. And then using this fracture square, we can uh, recover LNX from its localization, uh, its localization at K naught all the way to a K local of X using this fracture square in theory. Well, by, by in theory, I mean the computation, even though this is a strategy, it gives you a filtration and it's sort of like this LN localizing sort of like the building block of this filtration. But in theory, their computation is hard. So let me mention to you how to, how can we come? So how, how is this helpful? Well, one option is we can compute pi star of the k localization of a spectrum X uh, using a spectral sequence from using the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence. And so one fact is for nice X, there is some condition on X. Uh, X, a uh, KN localization of X is equivalent to EN from our E series smash with X. And EN has a GN action. So it takes the home to fixed points of this smash product. And I lied a little bit. Here, really, we are taking some sort of completed version of the localization of this smash product. So there's some subtlety with the smash product, which actually uh, we have to uh, let me resist because there's some inaccuracy. Uh, we have to do LKN local of EN smash with K. This smash product is not necessarily uh, KN local. We have to KN localize it and then take homotopy fixed points with respect to GN. And this will give us a spectral sequence with E2 page. It's a continuous group homology of GN with coefficients in the completed E an homology group of X, and this converges to a uh, pi star pi t uh, pi t minus s of L K n of X. And if you remember, pages ago, pages ago, when we talk about the geometry of the moduli stack of formal groups, we have this identification. Yeah, there's a stack equation of pi naught e n by the by the more stable group, and this turns out to be the formal neighborhood of a height n point inside uh, this open subset u n. So yes, you can think of this. Can think of this as a shift cohomology over that formal neighborhood h and hat. And uh, maybe a way to package all those, uh, to package all those connections between MFG and uh, modulized stack of formal groups is to say that, maybe I should skip this. Uh, yeah, but let me just say this. Uh, let me just skip that part because it's I'm running short on time. So, okay, next monochromatic layer. So you might want to call this KN localization of X, the monochromatic layer, sort of it's like you just look at height N layer, is your question? Uh, homotopy limit, oh yeah. Uh, uh, you want, we want to call this KN localization a monochromatic layer, but actually that's not inaccurate. That's inaccurate. Uh, there is a term a monochromatic layer uh, for some specific things. So this traces back to the very definition, very, uh, I guess the first usage of the word chromatic in literature, namely we have a spectral sequence to compute the E2 page of the Adams Nopko spectral sequence. But there's too many stuff I'm going to skip. Do I want to skip this? Yeah, what is one of, so let me just mention it. 
probably I probably will have no time to do the computation. So we, we, let's talk about the BP. So this this whole thing arises from the one attempt to compute the BP based Adams Novikov spectral sequence, which said which was e two page is x st BP star BP where BP is a Brown Peterson spectrum. BP star converges to pi t minus s of the uh, p local sphere. In general, this is we want to compute this e two page, but this is hard. The s equals zero nine for anything any x group is really the easier, easier ones. So if you do anything like BP star with the m commercial, this is easier. This is easier, easy easier to compute. So uh, one way to do this is by the following. Uh, so one way, uh, how should I say this? There's too many steps that I need to motivate in order to make sense of this. So let's keep this. So one way, to compute this E2 page is follows is as follows set uh I will just introduce some notation and not to be BP star recall this uh, whose uh this BP star as coefficient is a p local integers adjoining v1 v2 all the way up to vn uh vn and uh, and it's uh, and usually we set p to be v naught, and we'll inductively set m k to be v k inverse of n k, and define n k plus one by this uh, shorty that sequence. So if we work out the first few terms. M k m zero will be well you, you will invert p in here m k will just be q join all those v i's v n's but if you invert but if, what's the quotient of z into uh, what's the quotient of z p into q well it's gonna be something like this z mod p infinity uh, v one all the way up to v n. And now, you, since we have basically quotient by some powers of uh, of uh, of p, then m one will be v one inverted z more p infinity. Uh, let me still put uh, v one here. Let me just v two, v n, so on and so forth. And the upshot is that there's a chromatic spectral sequence. I don't know if this is a earliest occurrence of the word chromatic in this context, which says that's the E2 page. We have a spectral sequence uh, whose E2 page is as follows and it computes this uh, E2 page of the Adam BP based Adam's known for spectral sequence. And uh, BP star BP. BP star, uh, BP star. So one question is, can we realize this construction topologically? Uh, uh, topologically. The answer is, can I just of course, ask, yes. Ask a, yes. Can I just ask a quick? Yes. Uh, um, so like, um, is your N, N0 a truncated BP spectrum or it actually goes all the way? Oh, this is N1. To... Sorry, that's N1. This is N1. It's not truncated BP spectrum. It's not. Um, and here we're not doing spectra. Like... We're, here we're not doing spectra. We'll just play around with the coefficient ring of BP. And not is BP okay. star, it's not BP. Okay. 
Oh, maybe but her question are... is about yeah. um, it doesn't stop at VN, but there are dots after VN. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. My bad, my bad. Yeah, definitely doesn't stop at VN. So the answer is yes. And one fact is as photos. If uh, uh, one fact, uh, to realize this, we have to use one fact. If the BP homology of a spectrum is P comma V1 all the way up to V1 minus one torsion, then BP star of LN local X it amounts is basically VN inverted BP star of X. Then we can, so here's the spectral level construction. For any spectrum X, X is a spectrum. We set a knot of X to be just X. And uh, since we have this relation between K LN localization and the inverting VN in this process in the construction of MN. So we'll just inductively set MK of a spectrum X to be uh, the LK localization of NK of X. And then we define the next level NK plus one by setting a cofiber. So you will have a map, the natural localization map from X. NKX to MKX, this is a natural localization map. And then you take cofiber, that's NK plus one of X. And uh, one ther the theorem, localizations, uh, it's called the localization conjecture in, in Ravenel's paper and later proved by Devin S. Hawkins uh, is, uh, and Smith is that when X is a sphere spectrum, the BP homology of this sequence is exactly the same, is the same as the chromatic resolution of BP star. So basically if you take X to be the sphere spectrum and you take its BP homology, we'll recover this chromatic, this tower that we use to construct chromatic spectral sequence. Second, second, moreover, we can identify those MK and NK as follows. We can identify those MK and MKX and NKX as fibers of localization maps of localizations, namely the D suspension K of MK is the difference between LK localization and LK localization of a spectrum. And how about the NK? Well, D suspension K of NK of X is the cova is a fi is a fiber of the LK minus one localization of X. So usually we'll call this part. Let me just use a different notation, a non-standard notation. Let me just call it M lower KX. This M lower KX is the case monochromatic layer. of X. So we wonder how does it compare with the KN localization? It's a question. Since we, we, we have two, sort of we have this monochromatic layer, how do you, and we also maybe use different notation now, M, N, X. And we also have a sort of just focus on the high time information, the KN localization, uh, L, 
higher localization of X compared. Well, answer is actually they determine each other. They determine each other. I guess this is really not surprising from the, if you think about this MN as this fiber and you think about that pullback square, they determine what I, they determine each other. Namely, if you can localize this mon, uh, this monochromatic layer, this is just the can localization. Likewise, if you take the monochromatic and monochromatic layer of the can localization of X, this is just the monochromatic layer of X. So it's like they, they carry the same amount of information. You can see that they carry the same amount of information. So, so in this sense, the can localization is also some sort of monochromatic, but that's not the actual definition. That's not the right definition, but they carry the same amount of information. Okay. Now, I guess I need to, so those, so you can see this can open M and look, M and this monochromatic they are pretty closely related to each other. There's another localization that's very important because the telescope localization. So another way to extract heightened information is by localization with respect to those finite complexes that Utah introduced yesterday. Complexes of Typhon. So, well, there are many Typhons, there are many Typhon uh, complexes and the construction is definitely not so canonical. They just say existence. So before we really do any localization or state anything, there's a foundational, there's a fact. Any two finite complexes, let me call them Fn of the same type, type N, are both field equivalent. So this means when you do localization with respect to it, it doesn't matter which model, which particular type N complex you choose, they are, they are equivalent. And now we define and let Vn be a self map of Fn. Of course, this is a abuse of notation. This is a self map because we might not be actually induced multiplication by Vn on the KN homology, but let's just call it Vn. Then define Tn to be the mapping telescope of Fn. So, namely, it's Fn with Vn inverted. Then We'll consider so we'll consider this telescope localization. Telescope localization. Is an LTN. Okay, and a related concept is LNF. This is a finite, some sort of finite version, and also some sort of finite version of L and localization. This is T0, which T1, which all the way to Tn. So we just introduced another version, another method to extract the height and information. So question, how to, how to compare the KN localization and Tn localization. Well, there are something that's known, namely KN localization, a KN local spectrum is automatically TN local. As hopefully I didn't mess up with the containment. I think that's the right direction. I think that's the right direction. So this means we have a natural 
map from the TN localization of X to KN localization of X. And one of the biggest open conjecture in chromatic homotopy theory that's still unresolved. This is a telescope conjecture says, says that this is an equivalence. This, this is an equivalence. Some cases are equivalently if you take the analogy between this LNF with LN, so analogously or equivalently, the LN local Realization of X with respect to the Morgan E theory is equivalent to the let me put an F here. It is equivalent to the finite localization with respect to the finite complex. And there is already some known cases, some proof cases. Only the n equals one case has been proved at prime two by Mahovat and at odd primes by Miller. By by Hans Miller. Okay, I think I have four minutes left. That's definitely not enough to do any meaningful computation at height one. But let me just say, go back to this k localization computation of k localization uh, k local spec uh, x. So this spectral sequence, uh, you may say, oh, it's a group homology, so we can try to compute it. At height one, it's pretty computable because at height one. EN is PID K theory and GN is just the PID units which acts on uh, the complex case, PID complex case theory by Adams operation. So in that case, this spectral sequence is very computable and it collapses when P is odd and when P is equal to two, we have other ways to compute it. At high two, this spectral sequence, uh, well, we can try to compute this spectral, uh, the, the screw homology by uh, using maybe elliptic homology. But in general, it's pretty hard. One, one reason is that even though we have this, this ENT X is a GM module, uh, the writing down an explicit formula of the GM action on EN is hard. It's really a recursive formula. So even though we have this nice formulation of how to compute this spectral sequence to compute the homotopy group of uh, KN localization of a spectrum, in theory, like, computations are I would say height one and two are probably manageable and the higher height, it's much more, it's much harder if not impossible. I think that's everything I want to say now. Uh, thanks for your attention.